Hello, thank you all for being here. Um, my name is Alejandra Cantu, and I'm excited to be in this meeting with Ms. Bessius and some of her students. Um, Ms. Bessius is a sustainability coordinator at Durham Academy, and I'm going to ask her if she can tell us a little bit about her role as sustainability coordinator and some of the work that she has been doing with students. Um, and then I would really like to hear from her students directly from all of you about some of the of that work that has been happening. Okay, um, I'm delighted to be here. Uh, I am uh, Tina Bessius. I'm a longtime uh, English teacher at Durham Academy. And in the fall of 2018, when the IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, I uh, put out a report, uh, a really big report that said we basically had 10 years to cut down carbon emissions by 50%. I thought to myself, well, that's clarifying. Um, 10 years is a great span of time in a school because we can go down, uh, my school is K-12, so we can go down and see second graders uh, and think about them in 10 years. They will look like some of the students here uh, on, and uh, they will be uh, seniors. Um, and um, we, you know, it's a, it's a really manageable amount of time to imagine and to work with. Um, and so I kind of asked around at, at Durham Academy and said, so how are we going to do this, cut down our carbon emissions? Like if, if the whole world has to do it, I think Durham Academy has to do it and everybody else too, but our responsibility is right here. And so um, we formed a student faculty study group. Um, and then um, the following spring, the student government kind of reorganized to include sustainability committee uh, elected leaders, sustainability committee chairs. Um, and uh, Sanju and Mukta are right here. Um, can you wave, Sanju and Mukta? Yay. Uh, and uh, they are the um, elected leaders for this year. We've had, they are the third group um, of sustainability committee leaders. And um, we, so, and I, then I got uh, named to be the sustainability coordinator for Durham Academy. We we're right about to define what that meant when the pandemic hit. So um, it's a kind of free flowing <laughs> idea um, that's still really in development. But most of what I, the work I do is with students. Um, and so I'm an advisor to that student uh, uh, government committee. And I get to teach all the ninth graders uh, in a course that we call Living Sustainably. And that's a non-credit, one semester, once a week kind of course, along with wellness and PE and things like that. Um, and uh, PE, physical education um, in our school. Um, and then I also teach a semester elective uh, called Environmental Sustainability. Uh, so uh, that's kind of the arc of what's been happening. And now I'm gonna let uh, Thomas uh, and Frankie and Sanju and Mukta um, maybe answer questions from Ms. Cantu about, you know, that's a theory, here's the reality now. Thank you, Ms. Bessius. Um, okay, so I, I wonder, one of my first questions, because Ms. Bessius spoke about two different classes, can you, like, are you all in both of her classes or just are you in separate classes? So I think I think I'm the only one uh, here who has taken both or is taking both. Um, me and so the Living Sustainably course, which is the ninth grade um, semester course, was new last year. So me and Frankie are sophomores, so we are the only ones who have taken that course. Um, and I chose um, the uh, Environmental Sustainability elective as my first semester elective this year. Um, so we're kind of wrapping up in that course. Uh, so I, I think I'm the only one here who has done both of them. Thank you. And I would really like to hear about some of the activities that you guys have been doing throughout the semester where, um, you know, impact or change or, or the start of change is taking place. Can you uh, feel free to unmute yourselves and, and jump in? I would love to hear about that. Yeah, so um, I can start by talking about uh, paper towels. So um, earlier this year, we met with um, Mr. Benson, who is our business director of our school, um, and talked to him about the potential for reducing waste um, and 
being able to kind of understand how that intertwines with like waste pickups and how that intertwines with the monetary aspect as well. So um, from that, we kind of move forward into doing a dumpster dive to audit waste um, at our school. And so we went out on a weekend and kind of collected from the dumpsters and determined how much waste there is generated in each category. So how many things can be compostable, how many things are recyclable that are being thrown away. Um, and then from that data, we realized that paper towels are a big, big part of our waste that's going to the landfill, but it these actually can be composted. So as a result, we're now um, starting to take part in an initiative where we reach out to um, some of the groundskeeping and maintenance staff and we're hoping to put compost bins in the bathrooms for paper towels so that all of that waste can be diverted from the landfill. So I just thought that was a really cool experience of kind of starting with just a small spark of an idea and then um, kind of just jumping into something new and learning more about it and collecting data and seeing where that led us um, and starting a new initiative because of it. Yeah, and like Mukta is talking about, we really think that we need to talk to the people in charge at DA to understand what we need to change. So this whole idea was sparked by our conversation with Mr. Benson. Um, and he gave us a lot of really interesting ideas that we could do that would work well and we could have the backing of the people in power. Um, and so in the past, a lot of these ideas were infrastructure changes, like adding more trees. And they, those have been pretty successful. Um, and it, it definitely is pretty cool to be able to say, like, we put these trees on campus to make a change, but we, we think the bigger change that we can make and that we are trying to make is through education. So we've been talking, um, what we've done, we've met with the administrative team here at DA um, twice in the past, I think, two or three years to talk about our goals to make DA more sustainable. And our first meeting was pretty heavily infrastructure based. And it did establish Ms. Vesius as the sustainability coordinator. And that was a really big step. Um, but our second meeting with them was to talk about how do we incorporate sustainability into the curriculum? And since having that meeting, we've had two um, different seminars about sustainability, one trees in Durham and another talking about recycling and how to do that effectively. And we've been talking to teachers about trying to incorporate them within their courses so we can really get sustainability to be on the minds of the people at DA at all times, because we think it's that important that it needs to be, it needs to be talked about in every different category of the school. Yeah, and I think along with what Sanji was saying about educating our campus, we also have posters that um, the sustainability um, committee along with like our, like our artists in our community have made. And that was something really helpful because we got to organize a big poster planning day and um, make posters for our compost bins and um, like what you can compost in our school store. So that was really fun. I think you're hearing kind of the array of different activities here. You know, when, when Mukta talks about you know, dumpster diving, you know, it was like really messy, dirty clothes, pulling stuff out of plastic bags, sorting it into heaps in the parking lot and, and you know, gathering data that was really important for us to, to use in, in going forward. And, and when Sanju talks about tree planting, there was, a, there was fundraising involved and making silly videos for a video contest for Durham, uh, the Durham Water Department. Department. Uh, and, uh, you know, we planted 80 trees uh, on campus the first fall and another uh, 35 uh, this fall. Um, and we hope to keep going. And then, um, and last spring at Earth Day, the class, uh, the, the ninth grade class that Frankie and, and Thomas were in, uh, did Earth Day projects all over the school. Maybe you want to talk about those, either one of you, about what that was like? Yeah, so I know what I did, we, um, me and a couple other people, we made like informational signs and we put them up around campus. So um, we have a lower school and our upper school are like right close to each other. So in like the carpool lines, we put up signs about Earth Day um, and that really helped. And it got some uh, attention on us, which was really nice. 
um, because people were interested. Yeah, and then what I did uh, was there was also like a a, um, a planting option for that, and that was one thing that I thought was really cool about the uh, the Earth Day project last year with the ninth grade class was that there were lots of options, so you could kind of pick what you thought your strength was. Whether that's like you're an artist, you can make signs, or you're good with social media, you can you know put information out there. So it really was a good way to like take your strength and use that to make a difference. I have a question, guys. So I, I hear all the things that you have been doing. Um, and I want like one of the things that I'm thinking about is like, what has been the reaction of your peers and other teachers and the community? Do you think that they are like, oh, okay, another sign about being sustainable, being green, or are they being a little bit more proactive? Like what, what has that experience been like for you? I really think it depends on who you're talking to. Um, a lot of the teachers at DA are really supportive. I know I've had to like miss a few classes or even get the help of like my teachers, like my digital art and design teacher, and they've all been helpful and happy to help. Um, for students, there are definitely a lot of mixed opinions on it. Some people don't want to take the extra step, which is like understandable. They're just not wanting to, but a lot of people do want to help and a lot of people that are helping are on the sustainability committee and we have such a big committee that it's really great to like hear a lot of other people's opinions, even if in honest ones too. Yeah, and also um, there are definitely students who don't want to go the extra mile, like Frankie said, and maybe they don't really even understand like some of the concepts or like what to compost, what to recycle. But I feel that we're very lucky at DA because everyone here understands that we do need to make a change. And so people have been very supportive of us trying to be better about sustainability at the school. And uh, a prime example of this is when we were thinking about rolling out a different food collection system that wouldn't require as much waste, um, we sent out a survey and the majority of the responses were saying, thank you for trying to make this step and helping our community. And while we may not always see that in every day, I think that's that's probably how people definitely feel. Um, and we just have to make it, give them the opportunity to make the change that they, they wanna make. Yeah, and I can add to that really quickly. Um, I think it also depends on the space that we provide the information in. Um, because for example, one thing that worked really well for us is we met with the, um, the faculty at a faculty meeting and showed them the printing data and how much um, paper we're using through our printing, which was really cool because we kind of got to partner with the technology office at our school to get us that data about printing. And then we were able to show that to the teachers. And when it was presented like that in a really targeted way for um, a specific group of people, so the teachers specifically in this case, I think a lot of teachers were a lot more responsive. So for example, my statistics teacher kind of got all freaked out about that. And she was like, I learned how much I'm printing. And so she changed like all of her um, assignments to be paperless. And so um, that was really cool to see. But yeah, as Sanju was saying, I think um, it depends on the person and it can, like we kind of do see this idea of like climate fatigue or people get tired of hearing the same thing. Um, but I think like mixing that up in different ways and like um, one thing that's been really helpful is when our committee grew, like expanding the actually number of people who are in our committee, that really helps make the whole school more responsive because we just have the power in numbers and like people say like instead of people being like negative about something, maybe they know their friends in the sustainability committee so they'll see something more positively. Why don't you get specific there, Mukta? You know, so there are about 450 students in the upper school. How many on the committee? How many at meetings? Things like that. So I think Sanju has more specific numbers than I do, but I think from the last time I heard, it was about um, 70 in the entire committee. Is that right? Yeah. And um, we have, I would say, 20 to 30 who are consistently coming to meetings. Um, so that's actually been really exciting is that we like our it's, it's been a huge shift in the sense that um, this year our problem is more finding enough space for people rather than finding enough people to take action, which is really cool. 
That's amazing. What a wonderful problem to have, right? That you have so many people that want to help that you're like, oh my God, where do we fit? Especially right now in COVID times where we need to be somewhat uh, separated and all that. But that's, again, what a wonderful problem to have. Um, I have another question. Like, for example, when you guys were talking about the tree planting and um, how do you go about, like, do you campaign to get the trees donated? Do you, like, how, how does that happen? Do people just buy them? Like, is there, I don't know. Yeah, can, can somebody talk about that process, please? Yeah, so yeah. in our oh, community, okay. In our community, there's an organization called Keep Durham Beautiful and they focus on um, improving re uh, previously redlined communities. Um, so we work with them in their tree planting section to help um, in our community and also in like the wider Durham community. Um, and I, we had like an informational session, um, like the tree seminar that Sanju was talking about. And that was not with Keep Durham Beautiful, but then, or no, it was, sorry, it was with Keep Durham Beautiful. We had the director speak with us about what they're doing. And then we went on like a little field trip around Durham and watched as like trees changed um, just in like our little town. Um, and then we also had a tree planting day on a Saturday and we planted seven, 72 trees, I think to be exact. Um, which Ms. Bassius was talking about. Yeah, and also when we planted the trees here on DA campus, um, the first time we did it, it took a lot of planning. It took a lot of work, especially um, from the former leaders of the committee. Um, I think the majority of the effort was right before I came. Um, but I, I just remember that there was like many Google Docs with proposals and it, it was a lot of trying to talk to the, um like leaders and people in power at da like can we make this happen and what really helped it was when we actually got the funds ourselves like miss bessie said through a competition by making a silly video um about a day without water i believe and so we won i think like 250 dollars maybe 500 dollars and i know that some parent was willing to match that number and so that was really that's what made it possible to plant the first um, trees. I don't, Miss Bessius, I think you said 80 um, the first time, and that, that's what made that possible. But then once that happened and the DA like um, maintenance team and the admin team saw how effective this was, because we also had a flooding problem and the trees helped with that. Um, when they saw how effective the trees were, they were like, we need to do more of this. And when we approached them about adding some more, they were like, yeah, the first trees were really successful. We can make this happen. And it, it was a lot easier this time. It was more of a, can we do this again? And they were like, yes, you can. That's wonderful. I was thinking of a program that happens um, in a neighborhood near where I live um, here in Monterey, Mexico, where on some weekends of, the, of every month, you can take recycling with you and you get an exchange a little tree, you know? And so then you like exchange plants, you, you exchange recycling for plants. And, but I was thinking like, where do the plants come from? So, so I, was, I was wondering like, hmm, how, how is it or easy or hard it is to, to get them? But anyway, that, that, that was another, that is another um, initiative to get people to start recycling. You know, it's like, okay, like if you, if you do this, then we'll give you something that you can keep at home and you can plant and um, it will help. Um, so yeah, one of the things I think, one of the things I think the students have been really good about is avoiding, you know, being all about bad news, uh, you know, the sort of ambassadors of doom. <laughs> um, and instead, they've been really creative about kind of creating upbeat activities and, you know, tree planting, everybody loves to do. Pollinator plants are cool. Uh, you know, we did a water bottle adoption day, you know, to get water bottles out of the lost and found and back in circulation and reduce single use plastics. Um, um, so, you know, the whole, you know, those Earth Day initiatives that uh, Thomas and Frankie were talking about, you know, we try to have a lot of upbeat, can do spirit uh, about the activities. Um, and then, of course, the class, the semester course that Thomas is in, 
um, has been more about the foundations and they um, had a chance to design their own final project um, and uh, chose to really focus on the underpinnings of sustainability at DA. Um, maybe Thomas, it'd be good for you to talk a little bit about that. Uh, yeah, I'd love to. So for our final project, we kind of thought about a few different um, options. Uh, you know, we thought about a couple like the, the issues on campus being, you know, people idle their cars, picking up kids, um, you know, two cycle leaf blowers. Um, and, you know, a lot of things that pollute a lot, but we thought we could probably make um, the biggest difference through education and, um, you know, like sending kids uh, out of out of DA. Uh, wanting to make change and being leaders in, you know, making change for the environment. So what we're kind of trying to do for a final project is create um, like a statement that we go on the website um, and a, like a report about climate change um, or, and about DA's, um, uh, you know, pollution that, that will be updated yearly, hopefully, um, and, and go on the website to um, kind of hold us accountable and um, make sure that, you know, we keep staying where we want to be as far as, um, you know, being a sustainable school. And in the process of developing this statement, Thomas's class, uh, it's just six students, but uh, they have interviewed the head of school and the head of the board of trustees and multiple other trustees and administrators. And they're really gathering um, a lot of input from these groups uh, and designing it as we speak. Congratulations, Thomas, and your peers as well for, for taking this initiative. Um, I wonder what your plan is. Like, once you gather all this information, is sometimes, as Ms. Bessia said, we don't want to be, um, you know, just talking about the negative aspects. But once you have this information, I wonder how can you share it with the community, with the peers, uh, with your peers, with teachers, so that they get maybe snippets of it. But, like, you know, like we have this information. And this is what we can do about it. Or what, do you guys have a plan about that? So kind of the goal is going to be to make a statement that goes on the website, uh, like the, the main school website for you know anyone to view, whether they go to DA or they don't. Um, and so a, a huge issue, we, you know, they have like five-year plans. And this last five-year plan, a really big issue was like diversity, equity, and engagement. Um, with, you know, racial inequity and socioeconomic injustice and stuff like that. And DA has, you know, kind of a statement like we're looking to make about that. And they've made a ton of decisions, you know, about financial aid and, and you know, very important decisions based on that statement. So we kind of want to, you know, from interviewing, you know, heads of school and stuff like that, we found out that, you know, tons of important decisions were made on that. So we want to try to make a similar statement about sustainability um, that hopefully, you know, when the school is saying, okay, should we, you know, build new buildings, should we implement solar panels, they can look back to that statement and say, okay, well, like, you know, it kind of gives us guidance on that. So we want to make a statement that the school can look back to and students can look back to that kind of gives guidance um, in terms of sustainability. I think we hope there'll be a lot of, you know, rollout and publicity. We don't know how it's going to be received yet and uh how uh what the next steps will be so it's uh uh it, it there, there are a lot of hopes and aspirations behind this uh but uh reality is to be determined well we all have to start somewhere right like if we don't get the ball rolling then it's never going to happen even if it's small steps or or it takes a little bit longer than we expected. And I think that's gonna be kind of my last question for, for all of your students. Like what, after taking the elective classes or the, uh, the classes Ms. Bessius or working with Ms. Bessius, what, what are your takeaways? Like what, um, what have you changed or what has been one thing that you do differently now because of that? Yeah, so um, I can start. So I, in 2020, I actually did an independent study kind of exploring this idea as well on climate psychology um, and how we can motivate people to take action. And so kind of from that study, I realized the power of kind of like actually 
taking tangible action and showing someone like something tangible, because I think one issue with climate change is that it's like so intangible and hard to understand and wrap your head around really. So that's one thing that I think the sustainability committee has kind of reinforced is um, like, for example, with dumpster diving, you can actually see how much trash is generated with your own eyes. Or um, we were also thinking about doing some kind of event where we like took out all the trash from the trash bins and showed people how much trash we're generating. Um, or so something like that, just kind of being able to see things tangibly. And another idea that kind of combines both of those aspects is something Ms. Vesius was talking about earlier, um, which is the importance of like kind of a positive lens. Um, so I was doing a climate workshop kind of related to that, where instead of looking at something like, um, I emitted this much carbon by drinking this cup of coffee. We can kind of shift our perspective to say like, by not drinking this cup of coffee or by not taking this action, um, I can save this much. And so like kind of by shifting to that positive like mindset and changing our perspective, I think is a really powerful. So that's something we've been really trying to do in the sustainability committee is looking to be proactive instead of reactive in that way. And another thing that my time with the committee has led me to understand is, you know, we work to make changes that you see in the world. There's so many people out there who are willing to support, support you in trying to make a change that you believe in. And there's so many people who will back you in your decision to attempt to make this change. So there, there's no need to worry about not getting approval. If you really believe it, there's going to be ways that you can get things done. And even if it's small, it's a step that we have to take. And it's a step that we are taking. Yeah, that's, that's really great, Sanju. And like, I wanted to add to that also is that, um, like, what Sanju was saying about like kind of taking action now, like not being like, oh, like we need to get all of these things done first. That's been a huge theme for us this year. Like the um, waste audit, the dumpster driving was something we were just like, you know what? Like, let's just do this. And like, whoever shows up, shows up. And like, we're just like, it wasn't a super planned thing. It wasn't something where we like went through a bunch of levels of approval. And the same thing with what Frankie was talking about with poster making. That was an event that we thought of on Friday and sent out some emails about and held the next Friday. And we just did it in the quad and a lot of people hadn't signed up but they just saw us doing something and they were like oh I'll join in on this so it was like really emphasizing that some it, everything doesn't have to be super planned and like really just jumping into things has been a big theme this year I think one thing that's really like stood out to me is so I am a couple other people help roll the compost bins that we have out to the like areas around our school and then bring them back in and I think that what has like really stood out to me is that I mean they start empty and all of them are full by the time uh Friday it comes and that's really inspiring for me because it shows that like people if they have what's available to them they will care and they will take that extra step and I think that's just really inspiring for me and it makes me want to help Uh, for me, really the most important thing that I, I learned was like, it, it matters. Um, Cause you know, I came into, into the ninth grade class um, and I, I didn't really like, I, I saw climate change on the news with like stocks and other stuff that I just didn't really care about and didn't really like have an effect on me or, or so I thought. Um, and then we did, uh, we calculated our carbon footprint and like, I found out that it would take like five earths to like support my lifestyle um so like that was really like that that was the moment i was like okay well i want to take i want to finish this class and i want to take the semester elective next year so like just kind of learning that it does matter and what you do makes a difference was really important to me so yeah i think tying it all up to i think uh sanji said this education right and oh no, <laughs> uh, education and just make, creating awareness and and letting people know like something it's uh, something like your your the carbon footprint you know something as simple like it's kind of like a simple quiz or to take but once you get the visual and once you get the info you're like oh, oh my god like I I really need to start making change and so I congratulate all of you for for starting and for being passionate about this and, and start and, and creating that change. 
Um, and I thank you for being here and, and helping me with, with this interview and with Specius as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I don't know if anybody has anything else that they would like to add. I think the students probably need to get to class. Uh, we've uh, run over a little bit. Um, I can stay if you have any further questions, but I think you got a pretty good introduction to sustainability at Durham Academy. And, uh, you know, I would be happy to take questions from anybody who's uh, out there who wants to know more. Um, and if anything I can do to help you get started at, at your school or continue a process, I'm happy to do. And I think I can speak for the students that they'd be happy to as well. Thank you again, everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Yeah. Thank you. Have a great day.